Good morning and welcome to Gloria Day on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. We're glad you're here together with us to worship on this glorious day of celebration. So let us begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
God of the resurrection, you gave your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by your glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome, boys and girls, to our favorite time in the morning, children's time. And today is a special one. As you can see, um, it is Easter, so happy Easter. But we have to go find the letters in our Alleluia sign. We can say it. It's been f- over 40 days. We can finally say Alleluia. So Alleluia, Christ is risen. Um, and so I have my shovel. So I'm going to show you a little video. Some friends helped me find the letters in the Alleluia. It was really tough. Honestly, there were some that I couldn't find. But you guys helped me, and we found them all. And so let's go to the video, and you can find the letters with me. Well, thanks, boys and girls, for helping me find all the letters in Alleluia. And if you remember, about 40 days ago, we we had a children's time where we talked about uh, what Alleluia meant. And it means praise be to God or yay God. Um, And it's it's a really neat phrase that we get to use now that it's Easter. And we don't use it during Lent because we want to kind of set the tone and and set Lent aside as special, that we focus on, on, on Jesus' sacrifices. Well, today, I also want to talk about candy. And what is your favorite Easter candy? Those are all good candies. My favorite candy is Cadbury cream eggs. And I don't have any with me today because I ate all of them. But you might go on Easter egg hunts this season or today. You might, uh, the Easter Bunny might visit you and and bring you uh, some chocolates or candies. Um, Well, today, I'm gonna share what's in my basket. It's not a Cadbury cream egg, but I think it's pretty good too. It's a chocolate cross. And this is just a simple little chocolate cross. It's a little Easter card, happy Easter. 
And many people get these in their, in their Easter baskets or in, in the little uh, Easter eggs, and they're great to eat. I love them, even though it's Palmer chocolate from the Dollar Tree. I, I love that. I'm, I'm shameless. And, uh, and so these are, these are kind of fun, but, but it's a cross. And I thought that's interesting because, yes, we know it represents uh, Jesus' sacrifice. But 2,000 years ago, I think it was interesting that it was really used as a very bad thing. And so Jesus obviously was, was put to death on the cross on Good Friday. Uh, but three days later, he rose from the, from the grave, and that's why we celebrate Easter. And so he took the, the, the thing of a cross, the symbol of a cross, and it went from really bad to really good, that he could conquer death and, and, and enter into new life. And so he goes from, from this cross that's bad to a cross made from chocolate that we can eat on Easter. And so it's really interesting to think about that. And if you think about it, uh, Jesus did that with a lot of different things. Uh, he healed many people. He took people from being blind to being able to see. He took uh, people from being incomplete and, and not really knowing how to connect with God uh, to people living full lives and being disciples and sharing the good news and the love uh, that he had for everybody. And as you may notice in our video today about the kids finding the, um, the Alleluia's, or the letters for the Alleluia, if you look out there, if you look at our video over 40 days ago, you'll see that where we buried the first two letters, the A and the L, there was nothing there. It was just, it was just dirt, um, and it almost looked like weeds. It didn't look like there was anything really there. But then, fast forward to when we found, when we dug up the letters, all of a sudden it was full of daffodils. And so God takes things that are kind of desolate or nothing and turns it into something beautiful. So as you move about this spring and as you look around at, at the Easter and the celebrations you'll have with your family, um, just see the things that, that are, are maybe old or, or different and being made new. So look around your property or, or where you live uh, or where you drive or where you play at the park and look at all the things blooming and, and then uh, figure out how to, to, to share God's love just as he shared with us. Um, on that little cross, or the big cross, and just how, how amazing his love was um, uh, during Easter. So thanks so much for joining me today, and for, and for all you children who helped me uh, find the letters in the Alleluia. So let's end in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for your wonderful sacrifice um, on the cross, and that you conquered death and, and not only gave yourself new life, but gave us new life too. And uh, thanks for bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. And please help us uh, share that love with everyone we meet. Amen. All right, until next time, boys and girls. See you later.
A reading from the 25th chapter of Isaiah, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. A reading from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 1 through 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I have proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to the book of John, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 18. Now early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. 
So she ran and went and told Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she ta- saw two angels standing there in white, actually sitting there where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Now supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 Happy Easter morning, everyone. May the blessings and peace of the risen Christ be with you on this glorious day, for indeed Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I used to joke that I truly believe that God has a sense of humor. That's why God made me a pastor. And I used to kind of roll my eyes at tele-evangelists, and now here I am, ironically, on a screen somewhere. God indeed has a sense of humor, or perhaps God just has a deeper understanding of who we are, of our human condition. In our gospel story for today, Mary has come to the tomb while it was still dark to take care of her beloved Jesus' body. But when she gets there, she finds, to her surprise, the tomb is empty. And so she runs to tell the disciples about what she has found. And as we heard, Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved ran to the tomb to see what Mary had told them. And once they witnessed the empty tomb, they left and went to their homes, but Mary stayed behind weeping. And then there suddenly appears Jesus 
But Mary believes him to be a gardener. Is this a little bit of God's humor? I mean, this is Jesus after all, God's own son. Undoubtedly, he could have let her know right away who he was. Maybe it's a little humor, but I think rather it's a deeper and greater understanding that God has for you and for me, knowing that we human beings need some time, some time to, to reflect and process and struggle even of our own understanding of who God is and who we are as God's people on this journey of faith and life. We have been given this day a wonderful promise, a powerful proclamation in the resurrection that indeed death is not the final word. The grave is not all there is. There is a promise and a reality of life to come. Jesus' own words about his death speak of dying and new life to come. Unless a seed falls into the ground, Jesus says of his own death, it cannot grow and bring new life. It's a promise that we see in the resurrection. It's a promise that's really built into the fabric of all of creation that surrounds us, is it not? Especially here in the Pacific Northwest, God's country, as I like to call it. We see it in those dead and lifeless trees, those sticks sticking out of the ground that suddenly are beginning to bud and bloom with new life. It's that circle of life that is captured so well in the verses in Ecclesiastes 3. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to mourn and a time to dance. It is that circle of life we see all around us. Death is just a season and there is indeed new life in the life to come. But there is also new life in the life here now, today, as Jesus taught us, as is spoken and prophesied by Isaiah, the shroud of death will be swallowed up forever in the life of Christ. Certainly this past year has seen that shroud cover our world. And so we look to the promise of the resurrected Christ to bring new life into our broken world. We look for that shroud of darkness to be pulled away as we celebrate this Easter Sunday morning. Jesus' resurrection is not just about new life to come, but it is also about new life now. And we bring that new life into our world by following in the footsteps of Jesus. And Jesus makes it easy for us, simple in his words, but a hard thing for us to do at times, and that is to love our neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself, Jesus proclaims. Do this and you will cover all that is written in the law or spoken by the prophets. So how do we do it? How do we love our neighbors as ourselves? 
What would Jesus do? What do we see as we read through the scripture and the gospel texts? Feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, healing the sick, welcoming the stranger, forgiving one another. These are the lessons, and that is the life that Jesus has called us to live. But the unique and wonderful thing is, is that, is that living out that life, loving your neighbor, is unique and different for each and every one of us. You know, the Gospel of John, this resurrection story that we heard today is, is sort of a metaphor for life's journeys of faith that are different for each and every one of us, right? Mary is up early to take care of Jesus' body. Peter and the other disciple are running when they hear the news that the body has been taken away. The other outran Peter, but did not go in. And Peter arrived and went right in. And then the other finally goes in as well. And both saw and believed, but yet did not understand. And so they return home. And Mary stays behind. It really is kind of a metaphor for life. Each and every one of us are unique and different in the way we live out our gospel life, in the way we live out that reality that we are brothers and sisters in Christ? Does it speak to the humor that God has in our lives? Or perhaps it's a greater understanding that God has of who we are and our need to experience and to learn and to grow and to spend time in the moment of what it means to be a child of God. As the psalmist writes, each and every one of us are uniquely and wonderfully made, knit together in our mother's womb. God knows that uniqueness in which we live. God embraces and understands that uniqueness. God loves that about each and every one of us. Indeed, God loves us beyond measure. The life, the teaching, the death, and the resurrection are a testament to that love. In the empty tomb, we see a promise and an invitation. It's a promise of new life to come and new life now. But it is also an invitation to live that life and experience that life abundant. Right? For God so loved the world that God sent God's only Son that all who believe in him may have eternal life. When talking about God loving the world, we see in that reading in Acts that we had before us today, Peter proclaiming that God shows no partiality that every nation, every religion, every place, everyone belongs to God. God shows no partiality, but God's love is for all the world. Indeed, God did not send God's Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world may have life through him. That is the promise, and that is the invitation. And we see once again the the gospel promise that is given to us today on this Easter Sunday in the words of Jesus. 
Go and tell my brothers, Mary, go and tell my brothers that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. God indeed claims us. Jesus proclaims us as his brothers and sisters in Christ. So no matter where you are on your journey of faith and or life, know that God's promise and presence is there. Know that God calls you. Know that God claims you as a child of God. Know indeed that you and I, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen.
Let us pray. Alive in the res risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before you, our generous God, who promised to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your mighty power revealed in the resurrection. Fill our church with the power of your love, a love that is stronger than death. Equip us to tell this good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Pray. Praise to you for your life and purpose at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use the majesty and mysteries of your creation to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for all that you have made. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Praise to you for the lasting peace made possible in the resurrection, inspired and fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages, reveal new possibilities, and inspire new beginnings. We give thanks for the generosity shared throughout your church which helps us respond to the needs of the world, live out our faith in service to our neighbor, and proclaim the gospel everywhere. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with this hope, those in fear, those who are suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. Assure them that Jesus is with us always, just as he was with his troubled disciples after his resurrection. Encourage our faith, ground us in the gospel, and grant to us all your peace, hope, and direction throughout our baptismal journey. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those on our prayer list, and those who are written upon our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill our assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in our baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work or school or in our community, and in every aspect of our lives. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust and love for all our neighbors. We pray specifically for the many peoples of color, our indigenous communities, our black communities, and Asian American Pacific Island peoples in particular. By the power of your Holy Spirit, subdue the hate that is so prevalent today and give us the courage to work, love, and pray for those who are living in fear. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Please take a moment to share that peace with those around you or say a prayer for peace in this time. We continue now with our offering and offertory music.
God of everlasting love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we now offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Even as we celebrate this glorious Easter Sunday morning and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we remember that on the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so even now as we receive his true body and blood, his true presence here in this bread and wine, let's remember the prayer Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Everyone is welcome to God's celebration feast.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you during this Easter season and all the days of your life. Amen. thou wellspring of great joy. Through this meal, you have put gladness and hope in our hearts. Sanctify the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the risen Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us go now in peace, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.